Welcome into the Paul Farrington Show. Paul, joined by Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia. I said in the Vikings reaction, I'll say it again here, this is why people tune into this channel, Ziggy, to see me and you miserable. Not only do the Vikings lose to the Lions in crushing, soul-crushing form, um, but the Packers then. <laughs> you, know, you know, immediately before the Vikings give away the lead to Detroit, you see the Packers get a game-winning field goal. Brandon McManus comes in, kicks his first first kick as a Packer, 45 yards, just snuck it in there. <laughs> it looked like it was going to uh, hook out for a second, but he sneaks it in there. The Packers win 24-22 over the Texans. You know, CJ Stroud leads Houston down the field and looks like they may have a game-winning kick. And then Jordan Love answers the call. I, he had that one throw off his back foot with 15 seconds left uh, to the end zone for Wicks, I believe it was. So I was like, what, what are you doing? I, I, that gets picked off. I don't, you know, disaster. Um, but they get away with that and they wind up hitting the 45 yarder to win the game here. And we'll get to the offense for Green Bay in a second. Um, you know, this was a game we were really looking forward to as the Texans and Packers are two of the bigger um, listener groups for this show. And, and these are two of the hottest teams in the NFL, oh, two of the hottest teams, two of the best teams. We think we both we have them, what, six and three. We had them in our power rankings this week. Uh, two young quarterbacks who are electrifying, but the Packer defense this is what we talked about off air right before we started. The Packer defense was just uh, super impressive today. The the pass rush that they had on CJ Stroud, I felt like whenever I was watching the game, you know, I was between the Vikings and Packers most of the day. It seemed like the Green Bay defense was making a huge, a huge stop when they had to, um, you know, Houston ended the day with 22 points, 16 of them came off of turnovers and the Packers, you know, when, when you, when you have those, when you have that many points off turnovers against a team like Houston, a lot of times you don't get away with it, but Green Bay for the most part did a good job of limiting that impact. And then other than that, they just shut down Houston. They, the, Houston scored six other points the rest of the day. Um, and, um, what a, what a huge sigh of relief from Packers fans these past few weeks with the pass rush finally picking up just makes this team so much more dangerous. They're another, they're another one like Detroit um, that they're just so fun to watch Green Bay because the offense is the offense has home run threats all the time. But when the defense is coming after you, too, that's when they can feel not unbeatable, but very, very difficult to beat. So I thought it was I thought the huge win for, on the day outside of hitting that big field goal was the Packer defense um, just be looking stout. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, C.J. Stroud came into this week fourth in MVP odds. And you hold the Texans offense to 55 total passing yards. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's domination. 10 to 21, 86 yards, lost 31 to sacks, zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. I know Joe Mixon had a lot of yards and a couple of touchdowns. But as you said, a lot of that came from short fields. And otherwise, I mean, the leading, the biggest reception of the day, the leading receiver was Dalton Schultz's one twenty-eight yard catch, which would not have hit. Was all over. <laughs> which would not have yeah. hit your bet. <laughs> no, Xavier McKinney was all over. I mean, he had that incredible sack just coming out of nowhere. Rashawn Gary came alive. Eric Wilson. I mean, you hear a lot about Packers going to the Vikings. Talk about a Viking going to the Packers and making a huge difference. Uh, two sacks on the day. Obviously, there were problems for Green Bay. I'm sure we'll get to that more when we talk about the offense and that inconsistency. But the defense absolutely got Xavier McKinney and Evan Williams establishing themselves as one of the better safety duos. There was a lot to be excited about on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, yeah, just just look at this. How many times here did Houston have an impressive? If you go, if you go and look at the uh, the drive charts here. You know, Houston, four plays, six yards, field goal. That was after the interception. Seven plays, 36 yards, punt. Three plays, punt. Then they had the touchdown after the fumble recovery on um, on that punt. Field goal, nine plays, 23 yards. Uh, they had a five-play, 55-yard touchdown. But then it's three plays, punt. Three plays, punt. Six plays, punt. Five plays, punt. I mean, it all came down to that 13-play, 45-yard field goal drive. I mean, when you look at this, the, the, the drive chart here, I mean, that's the Houston Texans are talking about that you're just forcing into like, 25 yards or less on a drive, oftentimes a three and out, and you're giving the ball back to Jordan Love. Uh, if Green Bay didn't make the mistakes that they made uh, in terms of turnovers, I think they they comfortably win this game. So we could talk about the turnovers a little bit. You know, Jordan Love, part of the experience of Jordan Love this season is he's going to have these amazing throws, these unbelievable, um, you know, the huge one to Wicks for a touchdown. I mean, they can score from anywhere on the field. 
But then there are also these plays where you go, Jordan, what what are you doing? And and that first interception of the game is just kind of threw it into coverage. But there are there are moments when you he's thrown off his back foot, and um, again, that's part of the love experience that needs to stabilize a bit more for them to to really go on a Super Bowl run. I mean, against Detroit or someone who's scoring more prolifically. Um, and there's not many who do it better than Houston, but against a couple of the teams that do, you just got to limit the turnovers. That's what cost them against San Francisco was a few turnovers when they hadn't done it for 10 straight weeks last year. Um, so Jordan Love, 24 for 33, 220, three touchdowns. He's 15 on the year in five games. I mean, talk about he's one of the most prolific touchdown passers in the league at the, uh, as so far in his career. Um, but then the two interceptions. So got to slow down the turnover rate. And I think Green Bay, other than that, you know, to be five and two, big win against Houston, great shape. Yeah, and I mean, Jordan Love, I think it's easy to forget. He's still relatively young into his NFL career. Extremely. And as you said, right, like the turnovers are part of the Jordan Love experience. But so, too, is that 14-yard touchdown pass to Tucker Craft, where he fits it absolutely <laughs> perfectly. His guy makes some crazy diving catch, I and know. it works. So... Yeah, I mean, Jordan Love can certainly get it done. And I mean, there's no doubt he had the better game than C.J. Stroud. Yeah, he had a couple more turnovers, but he also had 200 passing yards to 55. So, no, I mean, they need to clean it up. And as you say, cleaning it up, they don't need to clean it up to be a decent team. They need to clean it up because you can't win four playoff games or three playoff games in a row against some of the best teams in the NFL if you make those kinds of mistakes. I mean, the Houston Texans, despite not having much of an offense outside Joe Mixon, almost won this game. But the Packers might be starting to get the kicking game figured out. We didn't see enough from McManus to say either way. But you know there were cheers all across the state of Wisconsin when they hit the game-winning field goal. As a um, kicker, I've always thought Brandon McManus is very good. Um, he's, he's like kicking the I football. Mean, he struggled. You can't, that's like, only one of the reasons that he was out of the NFL. Oh no, while, no, no, but. I know. But earlier on in his career, like when he's when he's when he's on, he's a very good kicker. Um, but if the Packer defense plays like this, the, the Green Bay offense just playing a clean game m- makes them a top five team in the league or top. What we had them at six. So I, I think that this is you do expect them to clean up on offense. And what this is Love's third game, fourth game of the year, I think. Yeah, fourth game. Um, so he's still. Even though they played seven yet, he's settling in as well, as you said, not only to his career still, but this season. Uh, I, I think that Romeo Dobbs, the catch he had at the end of the game, since returning from his one game suspension, he's been awesome. Um, Jaden Reed, a little quieter today. That's the thing. We, we It sounds like a broken record, but all these different Packers players could step up at different times. Wicks had the deep one today. Some days it's Watson. Uh, and yeah, Josh Jacobs also ran the ball decently throughout the day. He had a couple big runs. So, uh, clean it up. Yep. That's definitely my takeaway for the Packer offense, but geez, I mean, CJ Stroud, yeah, it's 86 yards. That's I saw at halftime. I think he was five for 11 for 44 yards. And I thought to myself, damn, like if you told me that that was CJ Stroud's numbers and the Texans are winning 19, 14, like something had to be going wrong. Um, and it was those turnovers, but it, uh, it was an impressive win, a big win for green Bay who now, let me just take a quick look ahead here. Jacksonville, Detroit, at Chicago versus San Francisco. Those are your next four big games. I mean, you had to win this one. This was the first of a very difficult five-game stretch. And uh, big win uh, at home. Houston's fine. Their, their division is just so bad. But Houston, <laughs> like Houston doesn't have to worry about anything. They're going to coast throughout this season. Um, it's more of a, the issue would be getting that one seed. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think overall on the day, if you're a Houston fan, Sloppy game, one that you could have stole. Sucks, you know, regroup and move on here um, and get ready for next week when you're taking on Indianapolis in a division matchup, which, you know, it's a division matchup, so big game. And then Green Bay. I mean, if if they lose that game, they'll be in second place in the division. Yeah, so uh, that is a huge game there. I I do expect them to take care of business at home against the Colts. Um, And yeah, yeah, just just a huge win for Green Bay again. So any final takeaways? Yeah, so the Packers did lose the turnover battle today, right? They lost a three to zero. It's tough to win games like that. So good on them, I suppose, for (laughs) finding a way to win. But the trick, I think, for the Packers, Packers fans have been mad at us for saying they haven't played a complete game because of what they did against Arizona. And fair enough. But 
what I mean when I say that is it feels like there's so many pieces here that if it just comes together, right? A defense that can limit CJ Stroud to 60 passing yards, a defense that can generate turnovers. This is their first game this season where they didn't generate a turnover. Jordan Love making all of these big plays. You know, he had some turnover problems today. There's been inconsistency, but he's also gotten hot. I think if you're the Packers, you know, you're five and two at this point. The Vikings and the Lions are five and one. You lost the game to the Vikings, but whatever. You can split with them. You can still play the Lions. I think you're thinking if we can just get all of this to come together, and I think there's good reason to believe it can. The division's very much in play for them at this point. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, they have five division games left. I, I'm not at the point, as a Viking fan right now, I'm not at the point with Green Bay where I'm fearing them the way that I was the final 10 games of last year. But I can see the final picture, the, the vision that Halfley and LaFleur have for how this team can look um, with the aggressive pass rush, you know, the big playmakers in the secondary and an offense that at times can be unstoppable. And that would be terrifying. That would be a a very concerning thing for the Vikings or the Lions or even the Bears um, going forward the rest of the season. So you saw some flashes against Arizona. You really saw the flashes of the defense today against the Texans. It's a matter of bringing it all together here and getting that final product. Um, And at that point, again, still early in the season, game seven here, um, if they get to that point where they were at at the end of last season with an improved defense, now you have a problem in Green Bay. And that is very much in play. Um, it's not there yet, but it's something that I'm not looking forward to <laughs> when it eventually happens, and I do think it will. So that's why when you have these wins like today, 24-22, over a very good Houston team, and you did not play your best football, that's where if you're a Packer fan, you could sit back and say, okay, like we're on to something here. Um, so it sucks. <laughs> so it sucks as a Viking fan to see, that, to see this. And then Detroit also... Uh, crush our souls. Uh, disappointing week it's, seven. It's or a week... terrible day for us. Yeah, it's, a horrible week. Is it a chance to be the best week in Vikings history? There and... was there was a stretch with three minutes left in each game. The Vikings had the ball with the lead against Detroit, and the Texans had the ball inside the twenty yard line against Green Bay, uh, with a chance to to put the Packers at five and three. Now we're talking about the Vikings being. Two games up on the division, two games up on the one seed, three games up on Green Bay with the tiebreaker, and it just it, that was the moment we got too we got too greedy, we got a little too greedy, and uh, it couldn't have been an easy loss for the Vikings where they just you know Detroit kind of runs the clock out, scores again, we lose by double digits. It had to be the fumble recovery, it had to be the Packer drive to win the game. That this felt like the reality check as a Viking fan, and now we see how we respond from here. Um, I'm still very optimistic with with the Vikings situation. Uh, they weren't going to go undefeated. We we could have hoped, but this is going to be a great F- NFC North. I mean, all, all these teams are good. Like th- they are just good football teams. I don't think there's any fakers here. No, I mean, I can't wait to see this Packers team play the Detroit Lions. Um, we won't have to wait super long for that either. But yeah, I mean, I think at this point, you look at what the Packers have done. They're clearly legit. Jordan Love is clearly legit. Hey. Right, the worries that it was like a flash in the pan that would fade. I mean, you're Depends five what you and mean. two. Depends Jordan what you Love's mean by legit. Good. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to call Love a, a super superstar no, the way I, he was. I'm not but... saying what I'm saying. Jordan Love will be a very good NFL quarterback. Yes, yes. Right, yes. the struggles we saw at the very beginning of last season were because it was his first time playing NFL football. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He can play well enough to be to live up to his contract and play high level football. And look. You know, your only losses are to the Philadelphia Eagles, who look very good, and to the Minnesota Vikings. You got to win your first big win over a really good team. And it was in, even though the score doesn't reflect it, a dominant fashion. No, there's a lot to be excited about in Green Bay, which, of course, it just, it fits. I can't wait for these Packer games. Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco. That, in Chicago, too, because you kind of, you own the Bears. See if you still own them with, uh the way they're playing right now. I'm very excited for the next few weeks of Green Bay football. And if they're able to go three and one or something with Jacksonville, Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco, and they're eight and three, then it's a uh, problem time in the NFC North. So we'll see what happens. But uh, until then, a 24, 22 Packer win over the Texans. Our Houston Texans couldn't get done this week. So close. Long way to go still this season. So we'll see you next time.